Hey folks, Quilly Teen here, and welcome to another episode of Let's Play Kerbal Space Program, and we are about to land on the moon. Well, we're about to start our descent. I don't really care particularly where we land, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure to burn effectively retrograde to the surface here, but I'm going to specifically encourage Smart ASS to lock us so that we're bleeding off all our horizontal speed. Again, this is, uh, I've talked about it before, this is not literally the most optimal way to drop your orbit, um, but this is going to be okay. We're using all the fuel in this tank to kill our horizontal velocity, which if I... No, hide those. Bring up the surface info. We can see our horizontal velocity. We're going to try to bring that down to zero. Then we're going to plummet straight down. And coming in at a slight angle and, and various, various different ways, like burning. So ideally, you do the retrograde burn on the opposite side of the planet to bring you down lower before you do this is better in terms of fuel economy. But we have some extra fuel here. So we're going to be... You should be okay. I'm going to bring this down maybe below 100. There we go. And then instead of um, killing horizontal speed purely, I'm going to move to more surface retrograde, which I could do the same thing. If I turn this off, make sure to sw switch my nav ball to surface mode, I can go SAS retrograde over here. But that's extra button clicks. So surface retrograde is the thing we're interested in. It means it's going to slow us down relative to the ground. Now, um, as we start getting pulled down by gravity, that will turn us more and more and more vertically. Mm -hmm. So I'm just quick saving because I'm about to do some time warp here. And we're going to kill this. So one important thing on this display is note the difference between the um, altitude above sea level and my true altitude here, which makes me realize I probably should have started slowing down a little bit sooner. We are definitely landing in a high area over here. Very high area. actually concerned that because I hadn't noticed that in time we might not be able no no we're gonna be good yeah we've got lots of we're very good okay let's kill the rest of our horizontal speed there we go that's good and then surface retrograde turn 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 turns very badly with this on very badly it's almost time for us to jettison this just going to try to squeeze out the last of the fuel. And it's going to kill our speed, which is actually quite nice. There we go. Turn yourself up directly and jettison this thing. And I'm going to light the engines. There we are. Then I'm going to hit Alt-L to lock my staging so I don't accidentally open some parachutes. Um. Uh-oh. Oh, I screwed something up. I have a heat shield here, but I don't actually have a... Um, Decoupler. Reentry is going to be interesting. Because ideally we want to decouple from here. When we re-enter the Earth... Oh my god. I totally goofed by not having a decoupler between these stages. Well, that'll be really interesting. Horizontal speed is fine. We can do a little bit of that if I want to explicitly kill the rest of it. Slowly descend... Explicitly turn just straight up. This is going to be a success. We may not want to re-enter with this, actually. I wonder, though. We have an engineer. I don't have a wrench, but I wonder if I can actually just salvage little bits. I think I might be able to. I might be able to, like, tear off this stuff with my engineer because of the Kerbal attachment system. And I think I can. Anyway, enough worried about that. Guys, we just landed on the freaking moon for the first time in this playthrough. With a very cool-looking ship with a lot of sciencey bits. Doesn't miss a, a decoupler, but, you know, what could possibly go wrong with that? Eesh. All right, um, let's, let's do some science. Scan the outside first before we step. We got to make sure that we're not, you know, stepping into sulfuric acid or, you know, there's some aliens around, anything like that. Um, is this clipping through one another? It is, which is kind of funny, but that's all right. First crew report. You guys okay? Yep. All right, good. That's worth 20 science. Hell, we'll transmit it right away. Should have lots of power. Let's uh, take a magnet information. Temperature scan. Okay, collected and recorded the temperature. We will keep that. Uh, a very faint magnetic field is detected on the moon's surface. We'll transmit it just in case we get another chance to get stuff. And we'll get the material study and the mystery goo as well. Goo seems to be less dense here. All right, we're going to keep that. Uh, leave the sample bay doors open on, on the moon and go do something else for a while. All right, we're going to keep that data as well. It's worth 100, which is pretty good. The magnet scan. Did we not just transmit this?
Is our antenna broken? I'm gonna have to, like, save and reload it. But let's keep it. Crew report. I guess we'll keep this data as well. Um, and then there's nothing to do but to EVA. So we are going to EVA. As per our policy, the pilot will go first. Oh, let's go ahead and deploy that uh, ladder. Oh, I can turn off the smart ASS as well. It's going to shift a little bit, but then otherwise the feet will plant themselves fine. Supplies should all be okay. All right, St. Tubbis, you are going to EVA. Congratulations. Climb down the ladder. Technically, we can EV report and surface sample here, but it's doofy. Oh, we're actually stuck. I could just let go. The moon's gravity is not that bad. But let's make it look right. Ah! <laughs> let's make it look right. And he falls on his back. Nice little shiny helmet there. I think that's the uh, texture replacer mod that adds that. Looks great. Looks real good. Okay. Well, before you do any sort of reports... No. Yes. Let's plant a flag. And actually, what biome are we on? Midlands. Do, do, do. Uh, St. Tubbus. Tuner? Tubbus was first. So we're in the Midlands. Boom! And we're going to keep that data. And then we're going to just go over here, dig a little hole in the ground, get a surface sample. Do, do. Darker Midlands surface appears to be made up of basalt basaltic. Basalt? Some people say basalt, some people say basalt. Some people say something else that I don't remember. Uh, we're going to keep that. That's 120 sides. Very good. And we're going to go back inside. And since the ladder's a little bit doofy, we're just going to go and fly our way in. Which is going to be fine. Maybe ragdoll down to the ground. Move the whole ship. I don't know. Maybe I should uh, just latch onto the ladder anywhere I can. There you go. Okay, at least it didn't fling me upwards into space, which does happen sometimes. And can we board from here? Excellent. Good! And we're going to have TF2 brum 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 get to do his own walk. I should have had both people out at the same time. He can technically science a bit. Whee! There we go. Oh, he's an engineer. He's brave as hell with that. Uh, these would be redundant, so we're not going to do that. But uh, he's, he's going to get to plant his own flag as well. Because it gives them experience points. So, as I said, he's going to get to plant his own flag as well. Signed. TF2. Brum, brum, brum. There we are. So we can remember who did things. Also, they'll get medals and stuff like that, which is great. Jump! I don't think I could jump because I was partway through my step sequence. And board. Okay, well, Ascent should be relatively straightforward. The biggest trouble is still going to be that re-entry, but, you know, we'll deal with that when we get there. Let's uh, retract the ladder while we're at it, although the ladder is very tricky to click on. Oh, no, there we go, even though it wasn't glowing. We did have the ladder, just by right-clicking. Um, just because the boom looks ridiculous, I'm going to go and toggle it. And I'm going to do the same thing for the, uh, the, the soil sensor. They are, I believe... These little dangly bits are physicsless, so it doesn't actually affect the flight of the ship, but it looks stupid. And actually, I would normally, especially if I had it hotkeyed or something like that, I would, um, I would retract the solar panels at this point. Something is wonky. I know this one has to like finish an animation cycle before it retracts, but. It's really not wanting to work here. And my antenna's not working right either, if you recall. So that'll probably mean a uh, reload before we actually land, but let's see how it goes. Um, I actually forgot to actually hit my buttons over here. So that was risky, because we could have gone completely sideways. Go away, you. And you. So I wanted upwardsness, which I've got. We're actually fine now, but let's technically get a little bit more upwardsness. And then what I want to do is just have stability assist mode, and we're just going to face the east. And go ahead and burn. And then drop closer and closer to the horizon. We're high enough that we won't smack into a mountain. So now we just burn sideways. And this will very quickly become effectively a pro-grade burn, 
which means that we will be raising both our apoapsis and our periapsis, depending on exactly where in the orbit we are. As long as we don't smack into a mountain, this is going to be the perfect, most efficient way to get a nice circular orbit very quickly. Engine's already growing, glowing nice and red and hot. And the height of our orbit doesn't matter as long as we're not going to smack into a mountain. It's the only thing we care about. Time to apoapsis is getting pushed up. Once we get to about 10k, I will definitely um, work towards circularizing instead of just raising that. Whoa! That suddenly shot up quite quickly. I'm going to go and fast forward a bit so that we're closer. Oh, I can't fast forward because we were too close. There we go. Now I can time warp a bit until we're closer to the apoapsis. Whee! Um, so that I can burn there and raise the parry. I think we're fine, but it'll just make sure. Do, 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 do. Definitely raised it a little higher than I wanted, but I, that went so fast. It clearly wasn't a sign that we're using much delta V to do that. There we go. More time warp. And a long time to the apple. Ooh. That might actually be one we can grab. Yep. I can get back on board. Nice! Okay, time warp some more. We don't have to be right at the Apo. I mean, obviously, if we're burning prograde not at the, right at the Apo, then it's also going to raise our Apo, which is a little less efficient. But I, I only need to raise this a scooch just to feel okay, and then we'll plan our reentry maneuver. In fact, depending on where we are, maybe I could have just done the escape in the first place. But I'm going to feel safer if I 100% for sure I'm not going to smack into a mountain while I sort of navel gaze a bit. I think this is actually the correct place to to do that burn, which is kind of funny. Where the hell? Okay. Set the earth at 12 o'clock. Oh no, we're on the opposite side. We want to burn over here. So, let's do that. Okay, Perry is great now. Then what we want to do is we want to escape going... Wait, what? understand. I took off going eastwise. It says 90. Oh! I was looking up from the bottom. I'm like, oh my god, everything's backwards from how I expected. Oh, so yeah, this is exactly the right time to burn. This is exactly the right time to burn. Okay, I was right. Um, yeah. Prograde. So what we're doing here is we're going to burn from about here. I mean, maybe there's a slightly sweeter spot. And we're going to burn until our escape velocity happens, and we're going to want our departure from the moon, yeah, I should have waited a little bit longer, but it's going to be okay, is going exactly opposite the direction of the moon's orbit. There we go. Sort of tangential in a, in a way. Um, ooh, there we go. Space telescope. Transmit. No, it's not going to work. So just keep it. Do a new the UVA. Grab it. Keep it. Board. I should probably go and collect some of this data, but yeah, who cares? Uh, we can retract that. So that way, we are basically escaping going retrograde from the Earth, and that'll be fine. And then when we get around here, which is effectively going to be back in this orbit, but when we're going properly sideways, or really at any point here, we could, you know, manually figure out what the correct retrograde orientation is to the Earth, but no. I'm going to wait until we leave this sphere of influence. There we go. Let me go and use this way. It'll warp a lot faster. If we miss the apoapsis a little bit, but we're still so far that effectively this is going to be the same as burning from the apoaps. Effectively. Slightly more optimal if I was over there, but all right. Okay, there we go. Kill the warp completely. Burn retrograde. And we could probably tune this a bit so that we're not right on retrograde and probably save a couple of delta V. But we've got 630 left. Let's see what can happen to our periapsis from here. See, it doesn't take long. The apoaps we're basically burning there opposite of the parry. And the parry is dropping very quickly. Bit of a lag there. Whoop. And I'm going to bring it around there. We're enter about 30,000. We still have 400 delta V in here, which uh, we will use some of that to slow ourselves down. Because, of course, the big question mark is... Well, actually, I guess I could do that now. There's no reason not to. We're happy with our re-entry at 30,000. So... The only question I have, and I'm gonna I'm gonna quick save here because we may have to revert. 
Um, and actually, I should have originally planned an orbit that didn't bring me into the atmosphere. Because I don't know exactly how this is going to work. But TF2, brum, brum, brum. Because I know one of the things we can do with the Kerbal Attachment System is I can have the Engineer without child parts. So, we can go and just pull everything off. Exposing our heat shield. Because why not? I don't know. Because what the? Whoa! Orientation? Much? What the heck was that? Is it the camera trying to go around the ship? It must be. Uh, let's try not to get ourselves whacked by the debris. Alright. Just a little worried with all the fuel. Okay, so that has been ex uh, exposed. Actually, is that heat shield even set up properly? Is it clipped to the wrong part? No, what other part could it possibly be clipped to? So it must be fine. Okay. While I'm out here, I may as well collect those experiments that I couldn't transmit. Who knows, maybe we'll get a chance to, um, to get some more. May as well take the data in case one of these explodes in re-entry. Can't reset the uh, the goo, but that's still okay. Uh, the magnetometer never did anything, which is fine. It's allowed not to. Ooh, a little bit of lag there too. Okay, you've got nothing going on right now. The supply bag is fine. That's why we bring engineers. I, it's possible that anyone could have done that. I'm not sure. Uh, that's collect data, which is not the same as take data. So maybe you did transmit. I didn't see the credit for it, though. Well, you know what? If it didn't work, then we'll get it on an, another pass later on. Is there another experiment over here? There is. Take temperature data. Take the pressure data. So we probably could have run that more than once, but that's okay. Now, where the hell's the door? <laughs> Whoa, okay. What angle change? Seriously. Is there something like relev relative to this ship, and then it's switching to be relative to something else? It's really weird. That's, it says crew hatch somewhere, but it's not the actual crew hatch. Can't enter there. I think it might have been on the other side. Yeah, there's the ladder. There we go. Grab. So, I mean, if we hadn't been able to do that, which is what I was banking on there, then it's simple. We would just entered into orbit around Kerbin and run a rescue mission. All it would have cost us is a little bit of money. That's it. As is, hopefully everything's okay. Why is my periapsis changing? Why is my periapsis rising? It's only do that when I'm not time warping. <laughs> That's odd. All right, let's let's quick save. Let's get in close to the world over here. Something with the salvaging and experiments and stuff went a little awry there with the, the physics. I don't know. Maybe we have a little piece of burning. Maybe we're venting oxygen. That would actually be really cool. I mean, terrible, but really cool. All right. Everything is stable and good. Uh, our interest here will be to be pointing surface retrograde, obviously. And once we do enter the atmosphere, I will be retracting the solar panels if they don't auto-retract from MechJeb. Okay. Time warps at times 50. That should be all right. And at 70,000, we'll re-enter. I'll try to drop the time warping once we hit about 100,000. There we go. Just enter it like times 10. That's going to be fine. We don't have to worry about skipping some of the atmosphere and weird things happening. And nope, looks like I will have to retract these guys. I'll have to add them to... Um, action groups in the future to make this a little less annoying. Just If you can just hit the one key or something like that, that's really handy. Also, I don't think these are physics enabled, but I should have gone and tucked them all away. 
before re-entering. Now here we're not getting any real heat effects yet. It's mostly just cosmetic. We're not even getting like the sound of the wind yet, because there's no air. Certainly getting some lag though. Um, the power should be fine, because we should be... Um, well, no, I was going to say we're in the sun, but of course I just put away the solar panels. On the other hand, what we do have is a lot of battery power. Okay, that's closing up. It looks like they are all closed up. So here's hoping, here's hoping that that's installed correctly, that jettisoning things didn't screw anything up. We can take a look at the ablator, which currently is not losing any hit points, which has me a bit concerned that it's not actually soaking anything for us. I mean, we're still a little high up. There's not that much air. But there's some. <gasps> it's not using the ablator at all. What I might do is reload from the last quick save uh, and just, just do the exact same thing we just did, but hope that it, like, sort of reset things. Clearly, something ain't right. Clearly something isn't right. It's not using the ablator. So we're probably going to explode at around 30,000. So we're going to let that happen just to see. Uh, but push comes to shove, what we'll do is we'll just reload from there and it should work. I mean, there's no reason. It's clearly there. We have an ablator. There's nothing, there's nothing underneath it. I think a reload will cause it to recognize that it should properly be exposed to the air. Maybe some weird interaction with uh, Ferrum Aerospace not reloading after removing the components or something like that. Not recognizing that my um, my, sero, my sort of aerodynamics changed. I don't know if that's a thing. Power is good. We're still facing the right way. I have no idea what's going to happen here, but clearly something is glitched. Maybe we left a uh, wrapping paper on after we de uh, destroyed the other bit. <laughs> I could... I could drop the drogue chute, but it would definitely burn up now. The air is not thick enough for it to slow us down, and if things are on fire, it would rip up right away. I'm happy we introduced the drogue, but I don't think that's actually going to solve anything at this time. Come on, baby. Hold together. But yeah, around 30,000. That'll be the real acid test. If we hit 30,000 and we haven't exploded yet, I might start to feel confident. But there's a lot of speed to bleed off. This is a lot, a lot faster than re-entering from a simple Kerbin orbit. Because our orbit was so big, it means we're going very fast at this point. Fast enough to, you know, slingshot us back up to like 5 million meters, right? So we were coming in with a lot of speed. We're coming in with over 300 meters per second, whereas normal orbital velocity is it's about blah, 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 which is a lot less, I think we can all agree. But you see, we're not bleeding off a lot of speed right now. We haven't hit the thick air that A, causes us to slow down a lot, but also B, causes us to heat up a lot. But the speed difference is going to start changing pretty dramatically soon here. Slowing down at, yeah, much more than a meter per second now. Maybe something like 3 meters per second or slow down. So now we're really hitting that. Our blader still isn't losing anything. This is not a good sign. Because the aeronautics, or the, the aerodynamic system, is clearly not recognizing that the blader is down here. Because normally you'd be bleeding off some of this. I mean, unless it's just going to break in such a way that the heat shield is still absorbing all of the heat, but not consuming any of its hit points. So maybe I've just de uh, created an un invulnerable heat shield. Which, I mean, these heat shields are basically, you know, invulnerable overall for Kerbin re-entry. Unless you were coming in at like 600 or 6,000 meters per second. Um, which you'd really have to work hard to do. Uh, then you might run out of ablation. Okay, we're about to hit 30,000 here. Our speed is dropping very quickly. I'd say maybe about 5 meters a second. Squared. 5 meters a second per second, yeah. Um, which is alright, although now going below 30,000 is when we really hit the thick air. And then at some point, you know, you start to slow down quite a bit faster because of the thickest air, but by that point you're usually not going quite as fast relative, so you're not getting the same heat effects. You're braking a lot harder, and yet not getting exactly the same heat effects. 
I don't know, you guys. If I'd known this was going to be a problem, I probably would have come in at a higher altitude, tried to bleed off some amount of speed in the first pass, and then get slung out to space again and then come back a second time, although you always risk coming in too steeply when that happens. We're below 30,000, we haven't exploded yet, but again, and I mean, I said if we hit 30,000, then maybe, but really, honestly, that was still a little, we still got too much speed. If we get to like 1,500 meters per second and haven't exploded yet, then I'll feel confident, and we'll probably hit that about 20,000 meters above the surface. Definitely bleeding off speed fast, probably about 10 meters a second now. I'm scared. I'm, I'm super scared. Normally, at this point, I would be physics warping. But I'm, I don't want to do anything that jostles the system anymore. In the olden days, what you could also do is sort of like start rotating, but I think that's... I don't think that's actually helpful here. And it's still definitely way too fast and way too much fire for the drogue chute to help. And too thin of an air for it to do anything. In fact, it's not even set to deploy right now. Can I even... I wonder. Min pressure. Actually, that's not bad. It'll basically deploy for any amount of air pressure. Now, will it have any effect? I don't know. So, we're still in the, the very darkest blue over here. Bleeding off a lot of speed. No heat meters, although we didn't get it last time we exploded either. And they're clearly on. Well, I mean, see, everything disabled, all enabled, which I believe is the default, so they're not up there, but some of those are like the internal temperature gauges. I actually wonder if Ferrum Aerospace doesn't generate the surface temperature the same way. It might have its own calculation internally, so it might not actually show us that we are almost about to go critical somewhere. Because remember, our re-entry with our, uh, our failed tourism mission looked fine for a long time. In fact, I think we definitely hit about 20,000 kilometers and then, or 20,000 meters, uh, and then we exploded with no outward indication that things were going terribly wrong. So I think it's Ferrum overriding some of the other behaviors here. Going at Mach 7.5, below 30,000. So some people, if they survive, they will get some ribbons for that. Actually, I don't know if there's anything above the Mach 5 one, but it's like something like ten, um, be at Mach 5 for 10 seconds below 30,000 meters. And that gets your ribbon. I mean, there's one for every Mach number, but I think there's a limit. I think five might have been the highest we've seen, and clearly these guys would be above five, so we're going to find out. Okay, we have let off a lot of speed at this point. We're down to 2,200 meters per second. Well, about 2,300, actually. We have bled off a lot. Still no ablator damage. I have no idea what that means. No idea. I'd fast forward at this point. I know it's like kind of long and boring here, guys, but at least there's a lot of drama. But you guys can fast forward on YouTube if you don't like it. That's true. I always forget that. I'm the only one who's stuck doing this in real time. Apoapsis is now dropped enough that we're clearly not going back in the space, which is never really a question here. If we're coming in at like 40, then maybe. Certainly if we'd planned a periapsis about 50, I think we would have skipped through, slowed down, but gone back in space and then come back afterwards. But when you're hitting about 30 as your peri, you're definitely not going back in the space. Okay, we're below 2,200 meters a second. I'm really tempted to deploy the drogue right now. We're officially non-orbital. Well, it's not literally true. I guess when the periapsis crosses into the low atmosphere, that's when it changes the camera angle. I think that might be it. I don't know if we're going at one second per second. I think that Ferrum is a lot more CPU intensive, and I think the game actually slows down a bit when you're getting these crazy heat effects. Or it might literally be the visuals. Maybe I can turn those down. But I don't know. Burning up is part of the fun, isn't it? Yeah, we were really dropping very slowly. We're mostly going horizontal. I mean, if we look, our, our surface horizontal speed is basically everything. Our vertical speed is nothing. It's only 10 meters per second. We're only going down at 10 meters per second. In fact, in fact, that's slowing down. Oh, because we're we're about to pass our apoapsis. That's actually okay. The more time we spend 
Actually, that will be negative. We literally are going up, aren't we? Yeah, we're literally going up right now. Which I think is good, because we are spending more time in thinner atmosphere, bleeding off more speed. And if we haven't exploded yet, I mean, temperature can still be going up, of course, but... Yeah, that is absolutely true. And that's about to stop. And then once again, we'll be falling into thicker and thicker air. But, before we hit that thicker air, we'll have blood off another, you know, 100 meters a second or so. That's good. Yeah, now we're going down again. Ah, that's really funny! I hadn't realized we were on our way up for a while. But yeah, we're now past our apoapsis, so now we're clearly going down. Our next stop will be in the ground, or vaporized into tiny little particles. This is a long horizontal flight. Holy cow. We're still going above Mach 6. I guess I could leave this up. Air density is 0 0.006. Yeah, so really no point in deploying a parachute right now. There's no air for it to grab, which is one of the other reasons we've been slowing down so, well, slowly. There was no air for it to grab whatsoever. And it would just burn up real quick. I don't mind if it burns up after a few seconds, as long as it can actually grab a little bit of air and slow us down without causing more heat in the front. I, I have to hope that we would have burnt up by now if things would have done it. We've already bled off. What did we come in at? We we're coming in at like 3,500 meters per second? So we bled off half our speed. I mean, obviously things are hot, and our, our tin can is just going to continue to get a little bit warmer, and we are about to hit the denser air and slow down a bit more. But I'm pretty sure at this point, our blader loss would have gone down a fair bit. You lose a lot more of your blader early on. I actually think we might be... Op oh, I don't want to say that. That's just cursed. That's just a curse. Alright. <clears throat> We're now dropping at almost four, or over 40 meters a second. Speed is 1.9 kilometers a second. And dropping. Air is getting a little bit thicker, but not much. Theoretically, we are temperature stable right now. I mean, if I were going up at this speed, at this altitude, I would be very concerned. This is about twice the speed I would be comfortable going up in. I think the heat shield might be working, but not ablating. Oh god, I keep saying that. I don't know internally how the heat shield is implemented. I don't know if it just has a really, really high heat resistance, or if it's uh, technically set up to radiate heat away very quickly. I mean, if it just had a high heat resistance, or limit, right, top limit on heat, then it would still transfer all of its heat to the other component. Clearly it's not doing that. So it must be set up to to radiate heat very quickly until its ablator runs out. So it must be radiating heat and just not ablating because it doesn't realize it's the first bit. That might be keeping us alive. Alright, we've just fallen below Mach 6. We're now dropping, we're closing it at almost 100 meters per second vertical speed. Going 1.8 kilometers a second. We'll, we'll bleed off more and more horizontal speed very quickly here. Air density is closing in at 1% of sea level. Any second now, we'll have 1%. There. 1% atmospheric density. So again, parachute, probably not that useful. In fact, I think we hit 50% density at around... Is it 10,000 meters? I'm not sure. For reference, um, if you're flying an airplane and it's an unpressurized airplane, right? Like, you know, one of those little Cessnas or something like that. And it's not a pressurized cockpit. Uh, you're not supposed to fly above, well, 10,000 feet, but I think it's like the ultimate ceiling is like 13,000 feet. But that means about, about 4,000 meters is as high as you're allowed to go without a pressurized atmosphere, like cockpit, or some other uh, form of oxygen in there. Uh, because you'll start to get woozy and pass out. It's like too thin for you to like be competent at. So that just gives, shows you how thin things get. Old, uh, in World War II, um, the, uh, the planes weren't pressurized, generally speaking. So everyone had, like, oxygen masks. Like, bombers would be a good sign of that. Like, literally, the belly of the bomber would open up, right? And obviously, that's it. It's all just one space. So that, none of them were airtight, so they always had to wear, like, oxygen masks and things like that. And I don't know. Do, 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 do. Okay, well, we're below Mach 6. Closing into Mach 5. We're now falling at 150 meters a second. Whoa, my whole screen just refreshed. It scared the crap out of me. We are traveling at 1.6 kilometers a second horizontally. Most of our speed is still horizontal, and I'm still getting whole screen blinks. I don't know if that's showing up in the recording or not. Very scary. Very scary. 
this is the longest re-entry ever. I mean, partially it's because most of the time I do um, go times for it or something. But still, did we come in? Is our aerodynamics slightly differently? So we're not actually... Maybe we're not bleeding off as much air sideways. Oh, that's the other thing. Actually, no. What's happening is this is a much, much heavier capsule. That's what's going on here. That's why it's such a slow recovery. Uh, because it's a 2.5 meter capsule, it's considerably heavier. So it's taking a lot, it's got coming in with more inertia. Same amount of speed, but more inertia or more momentum. Um, so it's harder to break in the air, which does mean we're generating more heat overall. But we're closing on 20,000. Air pressure is now about 3% of atmospheric. Again, no point in deploying a chute, especially since this is gonna burn up after a couple of seconds. Horizontal speed, 1.4 kilometers. We're now dropping at over 200 meters a second. And indeed, our altitude is dropping pretty quickly. Which does mean the air density is going to raise pretty quickly. Which is going to slow us down faster, but also generate more heat, potentially. Although... God, I don't want to say it. I, and It mostly depends on how much internal heat is going on in here. But this is starting to be a reasonable heat for atmospheric flight in here, and we're not even in the thick, or reasonable speed for atmospheric flight. I mean, this is Mach 4, which you could do with just a plane at this point. It's not unreasonable. Um, at all. The biggest risk at those speeds with planes is that just the air pressure snaps your wing off or something like that, as opposed to the heat truly burning you up. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to EVA now. Uh, temperature scan, though. Sure. It does open up the thing on the side. Oh, I think we missed the spot. Um, but again, barring any sort of internal heat, I think we've done it. So I'm thinking the heat shield was working. I think the fact that the ablator was not going down was just a side effect of how we detach things and how ferrum... I'm, I'm guessing how ferrum enters... Um, uh, aerospace interacts itself into the system. So this heat shield has been working the whole time. We would have never run out of ablator. That was never a risk. But I would have felt better if the ablator was going down because it would have told me right from the start, okay, the ablator, is, the heat shield that's doing its job. Yeah, you can hear the air pressure going down now. Any second now, this is no longer going to be red hot. Mach is coming in on Mach 3. Vertical speed, almost 300 meters a second. Horizontal speed, less than a kilometer a second. And dropping rapidly. Yeah. Now the only question is if I was I, if I was scared of smacking into the ground, I might be tempted to risk deploying the drogue a little sooner. But we're not. We're not even coming in over mountains. This is like the best possible way of doing it. Uh, I will test the drogue at a relatively high speed. Again, with Therum Aerospace, we don't get these things where these um, stages turn red when it's unsafe. Uh, in fact, I don't know if we get any kind of information as to safety. No, nothing. Therum like overrides that, which is a little bit scary, but makes it more interesting. I think I've tested the conventional shoots. Uh, at least the nose cone one at about 300 meters per second, and that seemed to survive perfectly fine. So I'm going to assume the drogue could probably do 500, and I'm going to do it as a test. These four shoots, actually I was going to say should be fine for this, but I'm forgetting how heavy this thing is. I really shouldn't take any risks, actually. I'm going to wait until we get, like, dangerously low. Um, oh, you know what I have to do is unlock my staging. Forgot about that. If my staging was locked, the spacebar wouldn't have worked. That would have been pretty panicky. So the drogue is by default set up to expand at about 2,500 meters, and the other ones are set to expand at 1,000 meters, like fully deploy. So presumably using normal air physics and stuff like that, we're going to be going at a safe speed to deploy well before that. So that's good. I'm going to assume, I'm betting that drogue can come out at 500 meters per second perfectly fine. But there's no rush yet. There's no rush whatsoever. We're still dropping. I, I definitely want to do it before 2,500. But the speed is still dropping. Yeah, this drogue is going to be perfectly fine well ahead of time. I'm betting we could do it now, but I don't want to risk it. I don't want to risk ripping it off because we've had too many things go potentially wrong here. And I'm actually scared that these three full shoots may literally not be enough for such a heavy weight. It is going to be good that we land in water. You know, it used to be worse, but I think in this case it's going to be very good for us does suck that the crew capsule is so low down on like the totem pole of our ship. Something does break, you know, after the heat shield, it's it that's going to take the impact. So, I don't know. 400 meters per second, still dropping. I'm going to go ahead and deploy it now, though. Deploy the drogue, because I do want it out there before 2500, so. There you go. 
going? There it is. Oh my god. Things are lagging and slow. That's Ferrum. I'm, I'm convinced slowing things down. I'm gonna fully extend. And it's still fine. Wow. Laggy, 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 laggy. And we're definitely safe for the other shoots as well. So let's pop them out. And they'll fully extend at one kilometer above the surface. We can turn off the ASS. So that's them fully deploying. Hopefully bring our speed down low enough. It looks like it's going to be fine. Yeah, we're still bleeding off some speed. Still bleeding some off. Around six meters a second. That should be fine. That should be fine. Becomes, like, progressively harder for every little extra point one of meters per second to, like, slow you down with shoots. But that should be okay. I'm going to get some missions. Biome scan of the moon. Plant flag on the moon. World first milestone. Spacewalk in orbit of the moon. Suborbital space flight. Walking on the landing and walking on the surface of the moon. Planting a flag. Excellent. More contracts. More, con more sub parts of contracts. Another full contract. And oh, those are my orbital scans. Those have all finished. Which also means I can uh, transmit all that data. Uh, because at this point, almost certainly they've covered as much of the moon as they can. That's my biome scan and my radar scan. Should be okay. I'm going to quick save here. And go to times four warp at this point. 6.1 meters per second. Should be fine. It's possible this capsule has a maximum um, re-impact of 6 meters a second. Oh, actually, a little bit more air was enough to bring it down. But it does have a little bit of a buffer, and we're landing in the water, which should actually be better in this version of Kerbal than it used to be. Bring it down to 1 for the actual landing. Gonna hide FAR. Tin can, T can. 10 meters. And splash down. Oh, we got another milestone. Return home from the surface of the moon. Return home from orbit of the moon. Ah, oh, orbit and then return home. So, so we've never even had a person go to the moon before. Oh, we can disconnect missile pressure scan from here. Yes. And recover. <sighs> I don't remember last time I was so nervous about a mission. <laughs> Definitely took a lot longer than expected. 575 science. Not quite as much as our Minmus one, but pretty good. I think the Minmus one also got a lot more orbital stuff. And we'd already done a lot of orbital stuff around the moon before. That's okay. St. Tubbus Kerman. 600 or more science. That's good. What about the mock? That's the splashdown one. First flag on the moon. First moon surface EVA. First landing on the moon. First Kerbal. First that. EVA zero atmosphere. Five or more contracts. Oh, they may have already had their their mock thing. And yeah, I think it caps out at maybe a Mach 5 ribbon, which is too bad. It'd be nice to keep setting uh, records on that. But there we go. We got 575 science from that. Um, we only recovered 7,100 bucks in parts from that mission. And the part mission costs like 110, 120,000 bucks to put out. I thought returning these bits would be worth a little bit more. But it's possible some of these costs have been adjusted with... Um... Oh, right, the distance. We only got 14.8% of the value. That's true. If you land right next to the KSC, you get more more money back. But that wasn't going to happen on this flight. Got lots of XP over there. Lovely. We've got a bunch of science. And I think what I'll keep doing is unlocking this tier over here, which is fun. Although, we do have to get to the advanced science tier over here so that we can unlock that uh, drill. Because we actually have quests for that. But that would be 550. And 300. Oh, yeah. So we need 850 in total science. So we can't quite get it now. Uh, so I probably will go and just unlock some more things along there. But there we go. Almost certainly, of course, we'll have some more missions waiting for us that we can accept. Uh -huh. And that'll be great fun. Orbital station. Uh -huh. See, those are fun. Grand tour of the inner planets and moons. Moho, Eve, and Gilly. Right. Yeah. So Mercury and Venus. And Venus's moon. Gilly is basically what we're looking at here. Interesting quest, worth 1.5 million upon completion. It doesn't run out on its own. It expires like being it's presented, but we may as well take it because we're going to want to do it at some point. And we could really do it now. Those are all just flybys. There's no landing. Ooh, that might be what we do. Um, explore Ike. Well, I can take unlimited contracts. We'll want to do it at some point. And Space Station probably will want to do something like that too. Uh, I don't necessarily care about recovering the components. Biome scam in Midmus, that'd be fun to do. We haven't done that, that yet. 
orbital survey of the moon. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about that yet, but we're not going to refresh any more of these contracts. So you have over a million Kerbal Bucks now, which is going to be important because we do need to do a few more upgrades. Wow, 1.7 million to finish that so we can get the highest end science. Because right now, our science limit is 500, which actually means we can't do the drilling yet. We have to upgrade this first so that we can unlock the thing that costs 550. But, hey, if we do the flyby of all those inner planets, we'll get a lot of science. Um, we could do it with a probe, but I think I'm tempted to send a three-man Kerbal crew over there, including a scientist, so that we can reset all the experiments. And I think that's exactly what's going to happen. And that might be next time. Thanks for watching, folks. Bye-bye.